Ladies and gentlemen, this is breaking news. In this video, I'm going to tell you how House Speaker Nancy Pelosi just announced the biggest compromise that she has ever offered negotiating with the Trump administration and the GOP to ratify the next round of stimulus that may ensure that you receive your stimulus checks a lot sooner and you as small business owners, the monetary small business aid, ideally to the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Advance Program sooner than we originally thought. As I told you this morning, Politico scheduled to interview House Speaker Nancy Pelosi at 1.30 p.m. EST. And I told you to go ahead and jump on the splash page, register for the talk. Some of you may have seen the interview. And I told you to ask the speaker, ask the panelists to ask the speaker, how can she go in piecemeal on demanding that House Democrats reconvene to work to vote on subsidies for the post office, $25 billion, and blocking all the changes that the Postmaster General is putting into place, the dismantling of the sorting machines and the cutting of overtime hours and the removal of mail collection boxes that we all grew up with. How can she work on that and not vote on ensuring that Congress passes a disaster relief package that gets more money out to the American people, more money out to small businesses, ladies and gentlemen. So, Politico didn't directly ask her that. What happens is when publications interview top politicians, the staff typically vets the questions before they go live. That happened to me when I interviewed a chat with then First Lady Michelle Obama. They actually asked the journalists with which I was working what they would ask her, and they agreed on what they would ask her during the chat. That said, so Politico didn't directly ask her that. So she got the chance to congratulate, talking about Michelle Obama, congratulate Michelle Obama on her epic speech yesterday, congratulate Bernie Sanders, and how it's critical to save the post office because it has 97,000 U.S. veterans on staff and that it delivers over a billion prescriptions, so it's a health issue. I totally understand that. Nonetheless, as you know, I was a bit frustrated that the House is coming back to work on money for the post office, yet they're not working on ensuring that you get the money that you need to feed your families and for you to save your small businesses. So she actually got to a point that actually puts me in a mindset that, all right, cool, they're gonna start working on the next disaster relief package. That said, this comes on the heels, let me just put a little more context into it, of a phone call that I told you about yesterday, the caucus call, House Democrats were on it and they were discussing coming back on Saturday to vote on a $25 billion for the post office and placing restrictions on the changes that the administration was putting into the post office's operations. So. During the call, House Democrats were actually calling on scaling down the HEROES Act proposal to ensure that before they went back on summer vacation, they passed some, some sort of disaster relief package or made progress with the administration of GOP to get more money out to Americans and to small businesses. Congressman Cedric Richmond, Democrat from Louisiana, he succinctly stated, he called for scaling down the HEROES Act proposal from $3.4 trillion to $2 trillion to $2.4 trillion. Around the same top line number that Pelosi actually offered, actually put out to the administration in order to attempt to come to a compromise. Now, another House Democrat that is facing re-election, Anthony Brindisi from New York District 22. He stated that he would work, he told NBC News, that he would work towards saving the post office. He was all for it, but that to please ensure that they pass some sort of disaster relief package, more stimulus for Americans and for small businesses before they send him back home. So they don't want to go home without putting something on the table, ensuring that they pass the next round of stimulus. Another House Democrat, unnamed by NBC News, stated that working on this subsidy, the $25 billion for the post office and not working on a disaster relief package on stimulus for Americans and small businesses would be inexcusable. It is echoing what I've been saying for the past few videos, ladies and gentlemen. I think these people are starting to listen. That's why I tell you, subscribe to the channel, watch these videos until the end so the YouTube algorithm can spread the video out to more people. And here's our message that they have to ensure all lawmakers, regardless of whether they, they're red or they're blue, 
they have to ensure that they always prioritize the people, people as consumers, just looking at, uh, looking at it from an economic standpoint, represent 70% of GDP. 70% of GDP. We have to feed our families. They have to ensure that they secure our inalienable rights endowed by our creator of life, liberty, pursuit, the life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. As small business owners, we constitute, as small businesses, 99.9% of all businesses in the United States employing 60.6 million U.S. workers, half of the U.S. workforce. Without us, the economy is dead. Bottom line, I've said it time and time again. So they know it. They know it. That said, during the call with Politico, two key things that Nancy Pelosi said that I'd like to tell you right now was first, that she did not want to have to wait to engage with the negotiations for the budget deal in the fall in order to pass the next round of stimulus. She wants to do that before that, before she has to start to negotiate with GOP and the administration for the budget deal. She wants to ensure that she gets the stimulus package passed first. Secondly, she stated that she'd be willing to slash the top line number from 3.4 trillion by half, by 50%. That puts the number at around 1.7 trillion dollars coming from the Democrats. That's what they're willing to offer. They're saying, all right, let's drop it down to 1.7 trillion dollars. As many of you know, Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin has stated that they're willing, that the administration is willing to come with more money, to put up more money, more than the $1 trillion package that they're trying to push to the Democrats. So that gets them closer. They're not miles apart anymore, ladies and gentlemen. So that vastly increases the chances that may get, they may get something passed as soon as possible. NBC News reported that House Democrats told them that they'd first vote on the post office on Saturday, and then after that, they would work on, on starting to get the next disaster relief package ratified through Congress. So they're listening, ladies and gentlemen. That's why I tell you, watch these videos until the end so we can spread this message as broadly as possible. Mind you, the HEROES Act appropriates $10 billion for the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Advance Program. Now, what also makes it promising for the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Advance Program is that Republicans are also lining up a scaled down version of their package in order to come to compromise and get something done finally. So the Republican package, according to several sources, is going to come $300 a week in the enhanced unemployment. That's the boost up that the federal government is funding. They were paying $600 a week through July 31st. It's also going to come for a small business aid. That small business aid, remember, it may come from the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Advance Program. As you very well know, as per a previous video, Politico reported that Ben Cardin and the ranking member, ranking member of the U.S. Senate Committee on Small Business and Entrepreneurship, he's pushing and he's working with Marco Rubio to ensure that they put out S.4227 that's mandating that the Small Business Administration disperse the full $10,000 Economic Injury Disaster Loan Advance Program to all legitimate small businesses. Rubio stated in the article that he's willing to consider it. And you've got Jackie Rosen, Senator, Democrat Senator from Nevada and Republican Senator from Texas, John Cornyn, who introduced the bill. There's six co-sponsors plus Jackie Rosen who introduced it. They're all backing this bill. It has bipartisan support. And you heard that ranking member of the U.S. Senate Committee on Small Business and Entrepreneurship, Ben Cardin, is also having Congress work on forgiveness for the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Advance Program. So that may come in that particular package, ladies and gentlemen. You already know that the HEROES Act is all for it, ladies and gentlemen. And the other thing that Republicans want to include in their proposal is what? Business liability protections. Business liability protections. Now, let me give you some background. First off, in the morning video, I told you how the acting chair of the Council on Economic Affairs in the White House stated that it's willing to compromise on what they're demanding in regards to business liability protections. So not completely making businesses immune from liability 
coming from damages due to the virus, but at least re removing, uh, limiting the amount of liability or excessive liability for which they may be accountable through business liability protection. Now, let me give you some background on business liability protection. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce, they're the ones that they've been pushing. They sent out a letter to the president, to House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, to Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, demanding that they include business liability protection in the next stimulus package. Why do they have the authority? Or why, do, why can't they demand to do that? And why is it that these lawmakers are actually paying attention to them? The U.S. Chamber of Commerce donated during this during the 2020 cycle, $2 million in advertising for GOP candidates, ladies and gentlemen. Over $400,000 for federal races in favor of the Republican Party. Now, on the other side of the aisle, we have the American Association for Justice, the Association for Trial Lawyers, ladies and gentlemen. And this group has donated $1.5 million to Democratic candidates about a million dollars to other liberal groups and $300,000 for Democratic committees. So it's the battle of the lobbying titans, ladies and gentlemen, and that's how everything works in this country. The companies that line these lawmakers' pockets, they're the ones who determine what are the laws that get ratified. So they're battling for this thing right now. So it doesn't have a lot of bipartisan support nonetheless. That's why they're listening. So you may want to, if, if, if you want to get anywhere close to being among the richest people of the, of the, on the planet, as per Dan Gilbert's strategy, you may want to start to stack up your money and once you're, once you're solid enough, go ahead and start donating to these people to actually get things done in this country, ladies and gentlemen. That said, you see how things operate now. That's the state of stimulus in this particular point in time. That's why I tell you to continue to move on because just because our, they heard it, they've been hearing us and they know that it looks bad. It looks bad for them not to prioritize the American people and small businesses while fighting for subsidies for organizations that have been around before we were malicious thoughts. Or rather, not malicious because we're here and everybody's good. Humanity is more good than evil. That's what I solidly believe. Or before we were swimming in our pop scrotum, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know what you think. Drop your comments in the comment section below. Watch this video right here. For more economic injury disaster loan and stimulus coverage, click the like button if you like the video. Click the subscribe button to stay on top of my findings. I level with you and I report what other people will not mobilize as much as possible to ensure that each and every one of you receives the monetary ammunition you need to save this country. May God bless you. May God bless the United States of America and everybody else on this planet. Talk soon.